So thank you, Simon. Uh, I will now introduce Advocado Maurizio Dardini. He has uh, practiced, you see, law since 1975, first as civil lawyer, and uh, he specialized, you see, very quickly in maritime law and international commercial law, becoming partner of one of the most reputable law firm in Genoa. And he founded uh, uh, in Genoa the Genoa Chambers, which houses the independent lawyers with shipping expertise. Advocado Dardini has handled very uh, difficult disputes as litigation lawyer and is also frequently appointed as single arbitrator or member of arbitral panels. I give you the floor. Good morning to everybody again. When uh, Francesco Lauro kindly asked me if I was uh, willing to make a short, inter very short intervention at this beautiful conference, I thought that it could have been interesting to focus the attention on the concept of delivery of a ship, which perfectly links with the previous uh, speech of uh, Simon. Uh, let's see why. Delivery, everybody knows is the final act of a long, complex, and sometimes dramatic process during which the vessel passes from the status of idea to the status of reality. It, delivery is the final act of such process, and it's a very important moment in the relationship between the builder and the buyer. If you look at slide two, we immediately understand how important is that moment because uh, normally in every contract of shipbuilding that will be the time of passage of property or title of the vessel. Then the right of the builder arises to claim payment of the balance price and uh, very important again uh, the exemption from liability except for the guarantee arises. So that will be the time when the builder can say, finally, the vessel is no longer with me and has been delivered. Of course, the builder will try to convince the buyer that the vessel has been completed and is ready for delivery. The buyer, on the other hand, will try to persuade the builder to eliminate all possible defects, even the minor defects, before the vessel is tendered for delivery. So everybody can imagine that this is the crucial moment where a great deal of conflict exists between the two parties. Let's use uh, briefly a magnifying glass and get a closer view of the entire delivery process. In order to describe the procedure that leads to either the delivery or to the rejection of the ship, I thought that uh, in the next uh, very uh, flying five minutes, uh, I shall try to use a linguistic approach. Delivery is the consequence of the acceptance. The acceptance is the consequence of the approval of the ship. And the approval of the ship is the result of the inspection. The word inspect means uh, to look inside. But Italian law uses instead another word to identify the same action, which is verificare, giving preference not to the action itself, but to the purpose of the action, which is to ascertain the truth, verum facere, to discover the truth. The outcome of the verifica will give rise to the most dramatic dilemma of the entire shipbuilding contract, whether the ship is deliverable or non-deliverable whether its true conditions, as ascertained through the inspection, correspond to your original idea as described in the specification and the plans, or not. In the affirmative, the vessel will be approved by the buyer. Here again, Italian legal language, used by judges and authors, uses another word whose etymology is particularly meaningful. The word is collaudo. Collaudo means cum laude and suggests the image of a student passing ex an exam. Here we have really the two limbs of the dilemma. 
If the vessel passes her final exam, she will deserve the loud and will finally be accepted by the owner. But the vessel can fail the exam and can be rejected. So there will be, now we'll be considering another concept, which will be examination and judgment. The verifica is not just a verifica, it's not just the research of the true condition of the vessel, but it's also a comparison, a comparison between what it is and what it should be, between the real conditions of the vessel and the original idea of the vessel as contained in the specification. The examiner can be stricter or can be more benevolent. Slide four and five can help everybody to reflect and perhaps to remember personal experiences, situations where vessels were accepted in spite of serious defects in completely different market periods or were rejected, especially during the declining market, for minor defects. You can look at slide four where you we'll find that the vessel can be re rejected for major defect, defects affecting class, defects affecting the intended operation of the vessel, perhaps with a big question mark for minor defects. Of course, the interests of the buyer are influenced by factors which can be extraneous to the contract itself and to the actual condition of the market. As previously underlined, the, mark, the buyer can be influenced by the market, the, by the problems with his financial arrangements, and by the problems with the employment of the ship. So, after this stage, there will be acceptance or non-acceptance. Here again, if we look at the words, we can think about the meaning of acceptance and non-acceptance, and to accept means, of course, a cheaper, which is, means to take inside in the family of the ship owner. And uh, reject mean to, means to throw back. To what happens if the vessel is thrown back? Uh, only upon delivery, probably in such a difficult situation, the shipbuilder will realize that uh, not only the effects which we have been looking at before will take place when the vessel is refused or is, de is delivered, occur, but there will be another important legal consequence, which is the one which I have briefly described in the slide six, in which I read, only upon delivery, the claims of the ship shipbuilder against the owner will become maritime claims under the 1952 Brussels Convention on the Arrest of Ship. Is that correct? Let's read Article 1L of the Convention. It, the Convention on the Arrest of Ships states that maritime claim means a claim arising from one or more of the following. Let, letter L, construction, repair, or equipment of any ship or dock charges or dues. So, a, a claim arising from construction is a maritime claim. But let's read with attention Article 3, number 1 of the same convention. A claimant may arrest either the particular ship in respect of which the maritime claim arose, or any other ship which is owned by the person who was, at the time when the maritime claim arose, the owner of the particular ship. According to such article, the claimant can arrest the particular ship in respect of which the claim arose, but also any other ship which is in the same ownership. What must be added to this very clear phrasing of the two articles which I have just read is that the convention states that no other ship can be arrested. Now we can go back to the two limbs of the dilemma. If the vessel is 
delivered, and if the vessel has not been delivered, has been rejected, and the contract has been rescinded. If the case is delivered, then both the builder and the owner will have maritime claims. The builder, if he has a claim against the ship owner, notwithstanding the delivery of the ship, for instance, for an unpaid balance of the price, which is not, is not secured by a bank, can arrest the particular ship in respect of which his claim arose, or a sister vessel of the same ship owner. The owner, I repeat, in case of delivery, and if he has a claim against the shipbuilder, can arrest another ship owned by the builder by proving that the claim arose when the particular ship was still property of the builder. But what happens if the vessel is not delivered? Here we can envisage two possibilities. The first one, the claim of the builder for damages deriving from the wrongful rejection of the vessel, which is the most common situation. Second, the claim of the owner for damages deriving from the builder's failure to complete the vessel in time. If we look at the claim of the owners, I shall invert the order of my slides, uh, there will be in practice uh, no real uh, problem because the owner can arrest that vessel in respect uh, which has not been delivered, which he rejected, which has remained the property of the yard, in respect because his claim arises in respect of a ship, and the owner can arrest another ship owned by the builder. But what about the builder? The builder cannot arrest the vessel in respect of which the claim arose, because he cannot arrest his own vessel. But, and this is the most important point in my opinion, the builder cannot arrest any other vessel owned by the same ship owner, because they are not sister's vessel of the vessel which has been rejected. Because they are not sister vessel within the meaning of Article 3, number 1 of the Convention. This is the conclusion of my brief speech. I hope I've been within the time limits. Uh, I can only go back on slide six, just in time. <laughs> That's a bit. I conclude that whenever the ship is rejected, the, sh the builder will not be entitled to arrest either the particular ship or any other vessel owned by the ship owner who rejected that ship. Thank you.